All right, great. Okay, well, thank you so much. Uh, sorry for the delay here. And let us get started. Just want to say thanks, uh, Jeanette, Hubert, Trade Thirsty, for letting me be here today. And I hope everybody had a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving. I know I sure did. So let us get started. Uh, let me move that. Okay, so um, what I'll be talking about here today is, you know, one of my all-time favorite uh, option strategies, and that's the option butterfly. So let us get going. So we're going to talk about today a, a six-step plan, and uh, step one is the strategy. You know, we're going to go through what is that strategy. We're going to be discussing the butterfly, uh, the most important option factor, how that really combines to make the strategy work, how option pricing works. You need to understand the, the components that go into the option pricing to, to understand what various Greeks or whatever components affect that price. Step four, selecting the right butterfly strategy. There are a number of different strategies, in it, and there are a lot of different ones you can use for different market environments. Step six or five is the trades and hedging. So we'll go through some trade examples to show you, you know, how these particular strategies perform and then how you can bring all this together. So the following uh, webinar today is purely for educational purposes. Any stocks, options, ETS, futures mentioned is not constitute advice and should not be construed as a recommendation. So I've been actively trading for over 30 years and was previously executive vice president for a company called Transworld Oil, one of the largest oil trading companies in the world. So it's a great uh, experience for me just from a standpoint of, you know, constantly learning. But, um, you know, we were big in oil, but we uh, eventually uh, diversified out and went to all the other big major derivative uh, type markets, you know, all the different futures markets, and eventually uh, we're pretty big into foreign exchange because of the liquidity of that market. Uh, we were also one of the first groups to start trading uh, options and start doing this on over-the-counter crude oil, crude oil so options there. And so that's where I got my introduction to the option markets, and it's been just uh, something I've been very passionate about uh, ever since. And went on then to launch the institutional over-the-counter crude oil options brokerage desk for a company called PVM Oil London, and they're the largest privately owned oil brokerage company in the world. So another, you know, another really great learning experience for me in this uh, point uh, for, for options because this was, this was actually one of the first times that I'd really started to look at option butterflies, and that's when we were brokering these types of uh, strategies and spreads uh, for some major institutions and banks. So it uh, got on my radar screen there. It's something that I've been very, very uh, interested in and been using for quite a bit, quite a quite some time now. So here's a picture back circa 88, and that's about when we uh, started trading options and when I started trading options. So uh, I remember those days, and what we started doing was selling options, and that's a big part of the option butterfly is that selling portion of that strategy to collect premium, and we'll go through that. But, you know, what I like to really express here today is that trading for yourself, you know, it can be just one of the best jobs out there on the planet because you can pretty much do it from any place. We've got the internet and uh, uh, man, you can you do it from any place in the world. So it's a great uh, way to uh, make a living, a great way to actually learn and keep your mind stimulated as well. But uh, you really need to stay educated about what you're doing and you also want to always be focused on your trading risk. Now the other point too, which I'm sure everybody here can attest to, is it can be very painful at times. And so what we'll be discussing here today is, you know, what I call the amazing, amazing option strategy, the butterfly, because it can be used in any type of market environment, and it's, it's a strategy that offers a really high reward and low risk. So that's what I really wanted to focus here on today in this presentation. So it's a high reward, low risk option strategy, and it, you know, by, by having this combination, it can really help you to re reduce market stress. So when you're getting tired of the market's uncertainty and periods of high volatility, they can start to really weigh you down. There's one option strategy that really can give you a trading advantage in any type of market environment, and it's you know what I refer to as that low stress option butterfly spread. So option trading, you know, in general, has so many more advantages than trading stocks, but as you probably know, it can be a bit more complicated as well. And for the individual trader, options can also be intimidating at times. But the butterfly is one option strategy that is really a must for your trading toolbox. Now, why would you trade the butterfly? Well, 
unlike other option strategies such as the iron condors or credit spreads or debit spreads, butterflies are very dynamic and can be traded for a variety of different reasons with different goals in mind. So it can be used for income. Now butterflies are a great way to generate income from stocks you think are going to go nowhere in a short period of time. And this can really contribute to your overall you know, portfolio returns in a flat type of market. Now they're also non-directional and, the, and in their simplest form the butterflies are kind of a delta neutral or non-directional. And so you know, trying to pick directions of stocks on overall markets sometimes can be very stressful and gets expensive when you're you know, getting chopped around where you're getting that direction wrong. And a delta neutral butterfly can you know, be set up to take a kind of take that guesswork out of your trading. And it's also very high reward, low risk uh, that can be structured at a very low capital cost at risk. So you can get like 10 to 1 returns and higher kind of risk reward is, is pretty common uh, for some of these butterfly strategies. Now the directional butterfly, now this is the way I really prefer to use it. And for me, directional trading is probably 99.9% .9 of trading really comes down to direction. So I really, uh, you know, really use the directional type of butterfly strategies the most. And these can offer you that bullish or bearish exposure to the market while you're managing your risk and retaining potential for large returns on a low capital at risk. So even though butterfly spreads cannot offer you that unlimited profit potential, they usually cost a lot less than buying outright stock or options and offer the amazing positive risk uh, reward uh, for your trade setups. Now hedging is also a big component of the butterfly and this is probably if the one most important thing that you can get out of the butterfly is to how it can really contribute to hedging a core position. So, you know, when you have a, a trade that's going against you, you can use this type of strategy to hedge off that core position. So when you construct this butterfly around, say, a strike that's under pressure from another core trade, such as if you had a credit spread on or debit spread and it's starting to go against you, one of the great ways that I've found to control your risk and lower, which lowers your trading stress, is to convert it to a butterfly. So what this does, it allows you to keep your original core position open. And we probably, or you, I know I've been here plenty of times, but when you put on a position, how many times have you had a trade on that you thought looked really great? It started out in that direction that you wanted to go, but then it stalls out or pulls back on your goes against you for a while. Well, and then, it, and then after, you know, it settles down, you know, for two or three days, it goes back in the direction you thought it was originally going to go, but you were stopped out. So it's very frustrating, but what I found is that when you convert a lot of these types of trades, when you convert it to a butterfly, this allows you to stay with your original trade. And then you, know, you can then eventually get back into the trade by either legging out of the butterfly, closing parts of it out, or adding to additional legs to it. So it gives you a lot more flexibility and options to your trading. So it's also low maintenance, and these butterflies can sometimes be called the vacation trade due to their low risk and need for kind of only infrequent monitoring. So they're very slow moving in their early stage, but then they pick up and get more you know, exciting and volatile as they approach towards the expiration and come within their profit zone or profit tent. So if you see this slide here, this is what we call the profit tent. Let me see if I can get my uh, drawing pen, pen up here. So with a butterfly, this is a very common, this is what we call the balanced butterfly. So when you get up into this tent, this is your profit zone. And the closer you get into expiration and the higher up into this tent towards your strike for expiration, that's where you make your max profit. And then this direction and this direction is your at risk. So you can structure these to be very low at risk in either direction with a really nice profit potential in this area here, what we call the profit tent or profit zone. So I'll show you some examples on that. Now step two is the most important option factor for profit generation. And um, you know, using the butterfly strategies in any of the option strategies, really, in my opinion, the most important factor is to understand the concept of time and the effects that it has on the price of an option. 
Now, time value is used in trading strategies you know, that take advantage of that accelerated time decay of the option into its expiration. And the butterfly strategy is very, very tied to this time value, or what we can refer to as theta, and the impact that it has on the price of an option. So time value, we also call it the extrinsic value of the option. It's the premium that a rational investor would pay over its current exercise value, the intrinsic value based on its potential to increase in value before expiring. Now this probability is always going to be greater than zero, thus an option is always going to have or be worth more than its current exercise value. And the change in the value of the option based on this time decay, we can measure that with the theta or the Greek called theta. So that's the cool thing about options as well. You can actually measure, theoretically measure sensitivities of the option pricing by using the, the various Greeks. Now the theta, what it does is it tells you how much the option price will diminish over time, which is the rate of time decay of a stock's option. And the time decay occurs because that extrinsic value or time value of the option is going to diminish as the expiration draws near. So by expiration, options will basically, they're going to have no extrinsic value left, and all out of the money options, they're going to expire worthless. So the rate of this daily decay all the way up to its expiration is estimated by that option theta value. And then by understanding this theta, it becomes extremely important for the application of option strategies that seek to profit from time decay. So here are the characteristics of this option theta. Now they're going to be either positive or they're going to be negative. And all stock options uh, positions that are long, such as, a, say, a call, if you go long a call or if you go long a put, that's going to have a negative theta value or theta decay. And this indicates that they're going to lose value as expiration draws near. So, you know, it's going to go against you if you're long a call or long a put, that theta decay or time decay is working against you. Now, all short stock options positions are going to have what we call then the positive theta values. And that indicates that the position is going to gain value as expiration draws near. So the time decay is working in your favor. It's all every day that the price you know goes nowhere or, or price goes on, that you're you're getting the advantage of theta decay, decaying that, that price of that option, that premium. So it's going to go down each and every day a little bit by that theta decay unless it's offset by a really big move in the direction of that option. So for example, if you had an option contract that was on your option chain showing a minus 0 0.10, now that will lose then uh, $10 per, per contract every day. Remember that each option contract is equivalent to controlling 100 shares, so if you have 0 0.10, that's $10 uh, per contract. So every day, even weekends and, and market holidays, such as we were in yesterday, that will go against you in this example by $0.10 cents or $10 per contract based on that theta decay. Now, for example, if you're a buyer, say, or a holder of an option contract over a three-day long weekend, and you would paid $1.40 or $140 per option contract, then an option theta, if you had that minus 0 0.10, you're going to find the price of that option. It's going to be $110 instead of $140 after a three-day uh, weekend. So that's that theta decay striking against your, your price of your option. So it's very critical that you understand you know, the effects that it has uh, on the price of an option and then be able to take advantage of it or at least know what's happening to your position. So this theta value, it also does not remain stagnant. So it's going to increase as expiration draws near and it's going to decrease as your options go either more in the money or more out of the money. So in fact, the effects of option theta decay is most pronounced during the final 30 days to expiration, and that's where that's, that theta value, uh, value really soars. So here's a chart to, to kind of illustrate that uh, uh, time and its effect on your options. So if you were to go out 120 to 90 days out, you're going to see on this, this uh, uh, chart here that you're going to barely have any time uh, decay against you. So you're, it's lo almost like a flat parallel line, but as you get you know, closer to expiration, 30 days out and closer when you get into those weekly options, then that theta decay really drops and starts to soar. And I like to kind of 
uh, compare it to you know, a riptide going out. So if you're trying to swim against a really swift riptide going out, you know, you're hardly getting any place as far as direction. So it's important to understand how that will accelerate and then try to take advantage of this accelerate time decay for your trading. And here's a, another example. So this is uh, to show you the um, the option, this is for Amazon. So to show you, illustrate how theta value affects uh, your option pricing going into expiration. So this is the Thinkorswim uh, screen platform or your option chain here. And this is going to be for the value of, of Amazon seven days from expiration. So if you look here, you'll see that Amazon is pricing here at the money price is $765. And you can see here it's got uh, seven days expiration. So we come over here to theta value here on the put side and theta value here on the call side, come down to the at the money price 765 and go over to that theta value. You can see here that value, you're seeing a, a minus 0.39 cents. So, that, so that's an equivalent of $39 per day of, of time decay or theta decay. So if you were to have bought, you know, Amazon here, the 765 call strike and paid 680 or $680, uh, if it did not move, uh, the next day you come in, it's going to be down 39 cents or $39 per contract. So that would be down to like $641 without, you know, having anything else affect it but theta. So it's a big uh, part of the option pricing that you, you really need to understand. And, and here it is on the put side minus 38 cents. Now you'll see that when you go in the money, so here's 750 strike, that theta value is going down on the call side and put side. Uh, and you'll also see that the delta goes up. So as you get closer to like a delta of one, that's saying that the, the uh, option that you're trading is trading closer to that underlying and that your, you know, the, the decay is affecting your price a lot less than it would be as you get that at the money type of delta of 50. And then as you go further out of the money, here's the 785 strike, you can also see that the theta decay is less. So it's important to, opt to understand that as you get closer to expiration, that it really starts to soar. And as you, you know, get at the money is where it's going to affect you the most. Now, if we look at this a little bit further out in time, you'll see that the theta decay is going to be less. So as you go out in time, it also uh, decreases. So here's 42 days out, you know, with the exact same price of 765, and you've got 42 days to expiration. Now, if you look at your theta values here on the put side and call side, come down to that 765 at the money strike, you'll see that the theta decay is only 22 cents. So it's about, you know, half, almost half of what it was as you were getting closer in. So, you know, it's the gift of time when you're buying options. So the further you out, the further you go out, the less impact that theta decay has on your option. So, you know, with certain types of strategies, they become really great uh, and have great advantages if you're trading closer in to take advantage of that accelerated time decay. And you can see that pretty much illustrated with theta values. And that's the cool thing about options too, because you can you can theoretically measure a lot of these measurements and components that affect the price of an option. So let's take a look at option pricing, and you can see more clearly, you know, how these different combinations affect the price of that option. So the major components for the value of an option will be time value times the implied volatility times the underlying intrinsic, extrinsic value, which is the underlying value of whatever you're trading. And once you know these variables, then you're going to be ready to price your option and know uh, what its option premium should be. So here's a, a table that we can go through and you can see how these prices work together. The various components affect the price. So when you have a, this is a weekly option chain here, and now most of the major options will have a weekly options and they come out a new series will come out every Thursday and um, when you have that first day of your option you're going to have a hundred percent time now time value times the implied volatility times your underlying value of whatever you're trading that's the intrinsic extrinsic value together and we're going to keep that a, a constant of one so you can see how the price 
flows through when you change these variables. So if you take 100% time that first day, times the implied volatility, we put it at 300, you know, keeping this the same, that would give you an option premium of $300. Now if you come down here to Monday, and you can see that half the time value is gone. You know, it's gone, it's a decaying asset, and it goes to zero, so you can see half of it's gone here. Now even though your implied volatility has jumped up to 800%, you can see that your premium actually has not gone up that much. And then let's change this, change that from 300, say put this to 200. So if you had an implied volatility of 200 times 0.5, you can see then your option premium is actually going down. So, you know, time value and implied volatility, these are two big components and they're going to go to zero. So it really affects that price of the option. So by knowing and understanding how those affect option pricing, you can take advantage of it you know, by either selling options or doing different strategies that are going to take advantage of time value going down to zero and implied volatility going down. So you would call this, a lot of times we can call that volatility crush and the time decay together. So two components that uh, also help, um, uh, you know, with that, even without price direction. So you can really take advantage of those once you understand how to start using them in your strategies. Now, step four then is selecting the right option butterfly strategy. And uh, in my opinion, one major goal of every trader should be to select trades that are based on what's going to provide you the most consistent positive return, you know, with low defined risk. And not always that big greatest, you know, return, that big home run. So I like to be, you know, for your equity curve, be very consistent. I don't want to have a big sharp swings up and down. And that also brings a lot more stress to your life than, than I want. So, you know, you, I like to try to look for strategies for trades that are going to be less stressful where you have a more consistent positive equity curve. And one of the best ways that I've found to achieve this is through various option butterfly strategies that are available. And then by knowing how they work, then you can select the one that's best suited for the market environment that you're trading in. Now, there are a number of different uh, butterfly strategies. You've got the uh, long call or put butterfly. You've got the short call or put butterfly. You've got a broken wing butterfly, which you can use calls or puts. And this is also sometimes known as the skip strike butterfly. Then you've got the unbalanced or what I call the ratio butterfly. And then you've got a directional butterflies, iron butterflies. And then the, the, the other big part of it is hedging you know, how to incorporate these types of strategies for hedging a core position by using a butterfly. So let's take a look at some of the various types of butterfly trades and, you know, so you can kind of understand the concept and how they can benefit uh, your trading, you know, portfolio to add, what you're, to add to what you're already do, doing or improve what you're doing. So this is what we call the kind of the balanced butterfly. So it's, it's directional or, and it's balanced. And you can also do, do this as kind of a non-directional trade. But this is your standard butterfly trade. So you'll see it's kind of that directional butterfly. And this is going to be on SPY, the ETF. Now these types of strategies work great on the, the various ETFs like SPY or QQQ uh, you know, or IWM because they have very, they're very liquid. They have very you know, tight bid offer spreads. So they're really great for the butterfly type trades. Now this particular example is going to be a SPY uh, long put butterfly and it's going to be a balanced butterfly. So what I always do on every trade that I take before I even put the trade on, I'll do my analysis and so I'll go through some Fibonacci price target analysis, then I'll go through the option analysis by basically looking at the what's, what's the expected move of that, you know, particular uh, option into its expiration and then I can construct my targets for my trade to see what type of strategy I might want to use. So here's a SPY and it was trading at $202. Now there was a huge, also a big amount of open interest uh, on the SPY for this specific uh, expiration date at the 205 strikes. A lot of times too I'll look at that open interest and I see if I see a lot of accumulation of calls and puts on the open interest that kind of creates kind of a magnetic pool at times and you'll see that uh, option pricing going towards that open interest. So 
the other thing that you'll notice too when I show you these examples, these price movements are very, very small. They don't have to be real big for you to make some really good money on very low risk. So here's the Fibonacci analysis. Again, it's a very tight little spread, and this was on the 15th. So just taking that little high to low here and putting in my Fib levels, uh, you can see this was a 1618 retracement to the, the level of right around $205. Now the other thing too that was very, very uh, uh, distinct on this when I looked at the, this particular FIB level and I looked at the open interest, there was a huge amount of open interest both on the calls and the puts at the 205 strike. So that gave me the strategy to set up as just a, a balanced butterfly. So here was the trade and you'll see how low risk this is and how potentially high the reward can be. So this was using puts and so this was going long at 206 put short of 205. So if you just break this down, you're going to notice that it's basically two vertical spreads. So this was long the 206 put short the 205. So what is that? Vertical put debit spread. And then you're short a 205 long a 204. That's a bull put credit spread. You combine the two together and that gives you the balanced butterfly. Now what you'll next notice is that how low the capital at risk is on this particular trade. It's basically only $14, so two cups of coffee or whatever at Starbucks and you could put on a contract at a cost of 14 bucks. so you're at risk is only 14 The potential max reward theoretically would be if you take your at risk of 14 minus 100. So if you look down here, it's a 206, 205, 205, 204, so it's a dollar wide spread. So 100 minus $14, the theoretical potential profits $86 per option contract on a risk of 14. So that would give you over a 600% return if it, you know, if it uh, went out right there at 205 at expiration. Now I'm not ever expecting to get that max return, but if you can get, you know, 30% of that, 40%, 50% of that, those can be great profits on very little risk and you know, super great returns on your capital at risk. So in this particular trade, it was on for just three days, and it ended up making $37 per option contract, so that would be a over 200% return on your capital at risk. So these can kind of be structured for that kind of lotto trade at times on very, very little cost. So here's what it looks like. Here's that profit tent, and um, if you look at here, you know, you'll see that that's your typical butterfly, that, that balanced butterfly. Now, as you get closer into this apex of that tent, that top portion, that's where you make your max profit. And if you can see this, you'll see that uh, this kind of, this is the teal color, that's the underline, and then you see the purple or magenta color, that's the actual option and what it's doing in time. So on this trade, this was held into expiration on the 18th, and you can see that that line, that purple area, was getting closer and closer to that top of the tent. Now, as it nestles up in there, that's where your max profit is. And this one actually got pretty far up in there, and it was you can see here it was trading up right around 204.55. And at that point in time, at expiration, going into the close, uh, that was giving you, uh, you know, about $30, $37 per option contract. So, you know, if you do five of those or if you do ten of those, that you know, it adds up. So this made over over three hundred dollars there uh, on ten contracts, thirty-seven dollars per option contract, and on just a low capital at risk of fourteen dollars. So that's why I call it kind of low stress because you know if you're totally wrong, you're only going to use lose fourteen dollars per option contract. So it's not like you're losing a hundred forty or fourteen hundred dollars if you're just doing outright you know calls or something like that. So it's a great balance to add to your portfolio. So that's what we call the, the uh, balanced butterfly. Now, my favorite, favorite of all these is what we call the unbalanced, or I call it the ratio butterfly. And so this is just a super really cool strategy. So basically what, what it is, it's just taking, it's a variation of a regular you know, equal strike or balanced butterfly, but what it does is it adds a short vertical credit spread to it. So you're going to see that it's a kind of, it's built on a two to one ratio. So it's simply you're doing, you're going to do two, uh, I, I prefer to do in the money uh, credit spreads to these and they offer you really fantastic positive, what I call positive risk ratio where your, your, your risk is less than what you make. So it's a positive risk ratio. 
So you can construct these and then you're protected by a slightly narrower, closer to the money debit spread part of the structure. So what it amounts to is you're going to be long one debit spread and then you're going to have two short credit spreads against it. So you can do this to directionally trade it up or down by using either puts or calls to structure this trade. So it's very low defined and very low risk directional type of option strategy. So what this strategy does by you know doing this kind of combination, it will alter the risk to one direction and increase the potential return. So by structuring either using puts or calls, you can structure this trade to go up or down with very little risk and really nice uh, positive risk ratios. So here's a um, couple of examples of this. So this is a ratio put butterfly on Amazon. So this was one that we set up you know, about a week ago. And again, it's a directional trade. So you know, first off, I look at my direction, you know, and it gave me a great setup here just using my trading model. So we had really nice positive momentum, cycle one, cycle two, good momentum here. And this is my new indicator, it's called a, a, a money flow, not a money flow, but a, a multiple flow, a momentum flow indicator. So what it does is it tells me multiple time frames and uh, it shows uh, additional momentum by, by you know, using multiple time frames of momentum. But anyway, so you know, I had three out of four bars here were positive momentum. So it was looking good to the upside for direction. Now I always like to use trend lines. So here's a nice defined trend line. And then I have my Fibonacci levels in here from this swing high right there to low. So I could kind of give myself targets based on Fibonacci and then also confirm that based on the expected move of the option for the series that I was going to trade. So I do all that ahead of time, which, you know, once you get the hang of it, it's very simple to do. And so we were looking for a target if it could close, you know, just right above here, this moving average, that's the eight exponential moving average. So basically if it just could close right here at 750 and look to break that trend line, it had a good potential to go, you know, back up here to that 786 area and then further, which it's which it's done. So we set that trade up on the 17th, and Amazon was trading at 750. So for a very low risk trade with a really high potential re return, and the other great thing with the butterflies, you've got multiple different profit points, and uh, which I'll show you and explain what that means. But so it was set up uh, for the trade was put on at 750, and it was put on for a breakout. Now it did break out. It ended up really taken off to the upside and took profit off right here when it was at 781. But here's the trade setup. Let me, let me go through and show you how that works. So this was a directional put ratio spread. So we used puts in order to make the uh, directional bias to the upside. Now the first thing I look at doing is put together what is my minimum target? Where do I think the minimum it needs to go to make this a profitable trade? So all we were looking for is a move up to 760. So from 750 to 760 on Amazon is, is basically nothing. So the trade was set up when it was at 750, about to break out. We had a minimum target of 760. So this was set up for a credit received of 125 and it was a two and a half dollar wide spread, so you're at risk is 125. So it's a one to one risk reward setup. It was a good trade setup based on the indicators directionally. It looked great, so I was happy with the one to one, and I was okay with 125 at risk. So worst case scenario, you could lose 125 dollars, but you know you can reduce that with um, you know some management techniques if, if you wanted as well. But going into it, you know worst case is 125. Now the max theoretical profit is 375. That would be a return of $300. So you can see here on the option, uh, you know, summary, it shows that you're risking your max loss is 125. The max potential profit at that point, if it was to pin right at 760, would be 375, and then you then you've got other profit points in between. So it was set up for $125 credit. You can see here it's a two and a half dollar wide spread. So what you're doing is you're buying the 760 two and a half put, selling the 760 two and a half dollar wide, and then you're going to sell two of the 760 757 and a half bull put credit spread. So you can see one put debit spread, two bull put credit spread. So you're skewing this for an upside move, 
and your risk then is 125. Your potential, if it just keeps screaming to the upside, is $125. If it closes above 762 and a half, you get the, you keep that credit you brought in. If it was to close right at 760, theoretically, you could make 375. So you've got the advantage of positive time decay, low capital costs, and you've got three different profit points, two really defined ones, but other ones in between that profit tent. So on the 22nd, this was just closed out. Uh, rather than take it uh, to the end of this week or today, and it was closed out for $115 per option contract. So that's a 92% return in five days. So your risk was 125, 115 per contract, and that's you know a 92% return in five days. Versus if you just bought the stock, you would have made a 4.1% return on your equity. So really defined risk, great return on equity or, or capital at risk, and it beats you know buying stocks or just going long calls. Now on that trade, you would have cleaned up on calls, but this is going in on a trade knowing exactly what your risk is and keeping it small, and I, I like that a lot. So on this trade, if you you know you can see here the credit received was 125, and it was covered back in. Um, you know on the 22nd, it had gone down to 10 cents, so it took it off. And you know that reduces your risk. You're out of the trade, you're done. You don't have to worry about the next few days if something crazy did go on, and you still were able to pull in $115 per option contract, which is a 92% return, which is a pretty pretty good return on five days of exposure. So you know you do five contracts. That's over you know 500 bucks uh, to your back to your account on a risk of 125 per option contract. So I love that kind of risk reward setup. Now here's another example, and this is another put uh, ratio. We've had you know a lot of great uh, trade setups here lately. Uh, excuse me, only one second here. To the to the upside. Okay, sorry about that. So we've had a lot of great you know, upside trades. So a lot of the trades I've been doing lately have been directionally to the upside. So we've been using these put ratio butterflies. So here's one uh, on NVIDIA. So in this uh, example, you'll see how you can, these two profit points, uh, how they're, uh, that's really kind of the beauty of the structure. So this is a, a NVIDIA, what I call a volatility breakout trade uh, on NVIDIA. And so this trade was set up on the 21st of September. And you'll see also again here very small profit targets. So the trade was set up when it was trading at 64, and we were looking for just a move to 65, just a dollar up. So we're not you're not looking for huge moves. This is the other nice thing because you don't have to, you know, have risk uh, to, to to make a huge move to the upside to make your your profits. So it's just a dollar wide up, and you make a decent, really nice return on your capital that's at risk. So it's put on the 21st. The expiration was on the 23rd. So it hit our price target on the 22nd and 23rd. So here's what it looks like. Again, it's a directional trade. And if you just break this down, this is based on my trading model. We're in what we call a volatility squeeze. These dots indicate a period of consolidation on price. And then we're looking for that price to break either hard to the upside or hard to the downside. Now we use our momentum flow indicator here. We use our momentum indicator cycle one, two. And that gives us our directional bias for you know, price needs momentum to move up or down, and this is showing us the biggest part of momentum is to the upside. So we put on the trade here for a break above that level here, that prior resistance, and that was coming in at 64. So you know, let's take a look at Fibonacci levels. What's our target base on that? What's the expected move? We do that ahead of time, and then we construct the trade. So here's what the trade structure ended up being. So again, the Fibonacci levels, put that into the analysis. I always use that. Here's your prior high, 63.42 to this low. So it gave me a 1272 extension target right here to 65. So the trade was here when it was breaking the 64 area. And all we were looking for is just a break for $1 move up to 65. And this was structured to make a really nice return. Now it kept going, and that just you know adds to the return. But here was the trade. So let's go through the setup. Okay, so it's a put ratio butterfly set up, structured on the 21st, 
and the part of it was taken off the 22nd and part was left until expiration the 23rd. Now, received it, the trade, if you look down here below, let's take a look at that. You'll see it's a 66 put, so you'd be going long the 66, 65 put spread, just a dollar wide, and then you're selling two bull put credit spreads to 64, 60, uh, 65, 64. So it's a two to one ratio spread skewed to the upside by doing two uh, bullish put ratio spreads or put uh, uh, bull put uh, vertical credit spreads versus the one debit spread. Now the max potential profit would be is if it pinned right at 65 on the 23rd, which was expiration, and that would be theoretically $129. The maximum loss is 71, so it's a dollar wide spread, was able to bring in 29 cents credit. So if it just keeps going up through 66 and didn't stop, you still at least make your 29 credit, uh, and which is not too bad. Your max risk, you know, going in is the difference of 71, but your big profit potential is at that point of 65. So on the 22nd, now this is the other thing too, is your credit, if it keeps going up, is 29, but if it's inside that profit tent, you, you have a really good uh, opportunity to make some, some pretty decent money that's, you know, greater than the credit received. And so in this situation, on the 22nd, just uh, two days later, uh, one day later, uh, took off part of the trade at $44 per option contract. Okay, so 44, you're at risk with 71, 62% return. Now, if you just bought the stock, that would be 1.5% return on equity. Now, left part of the trade on to see if we might get a pin on the next day, the 23rd, and that would be the max profit if it could pin right there at 65. Now, it actually came very close to that, so the second day it made 119. So what you'll see is really cool is that on the 22nd it was trading at 65 and it made 44. One day later it was trading at 60, actually a little bit less than 65 and it made 119. That's the beauty of the strategy because it's taking advantage of selling that extra you know, 65 strike. So it's a two to one ratio spread. So by doing that you're bringing in more premium and that's what you're taking advantage of, that theta decay and that volatility decay. So that's why it made more the next day, even at the same price. So let's take a look. So on the 22nd, had a nice pop to the upside. It went to 65. And I always like to take some profit just because these markets you never know, right? So it was went to 65. Here's that profit tent. And it was trading right here. So it took off part of the trade right there on the 22nd one day later. So you can see the max profit would be here, but it would never get there until the next day. But that was good for $44, which is you know a really great return in one day and on your capital at risk of 71, 62%. So it took off part of the trade there, five contracts. So you can see the credit was $29 credit. Now this is, now I had gone to $15 debit. So that's your $44 and that's over 200 bucks you know, in one day, just off part of that trade. Now, here's the cool thing. The next day, it see the, here's that profit tent. Look, see the purple line is up, up there at the top. It almost hit it to the penny. So it was trading towards the end of the day at 64.95. And one day later, and this was good for $119. So, you know, almost three times more actually than, you know, it was the, the day before. So. 119 per option contract, your risk is 71. So that's 167% return the next day. And down here you can see it was a 29 credit put on and it had gone to 90 cent debit on the last day. So this illustrates that component of that time decay harsh portion of it. And also then you've got volatility you know, going down to zero. So that's the beauty of it by taking advantage of that ratio in this situation being uh, having two ratio of two bull put credit spreads to one debit spread, but also you know capture risk by having that debit spread embedded into the strategy. So it's it's a really great strategy once you get the hang of it. It's the, one of the first things I'll look at for any trade that I'm doing. And it's a great way to also diversify your risk. So you know you don't have to do just the strategy you can add some debit spreads to it etc and it's just a really good di diversification for your portfolio 
Now here's another one, and this again was on NVIDIA, uh, and this, this one was for an earnings trade. So we were looking at this in the trading room. We have a virtual trading room. This was, NVIDIA was having its earnings uh, on uh, the 10th after the close. So we were more inclined, you know, we were looking at direct, non-directional earnings trade, but decided to go ahead and let's, let's take a shot at uh, an upside move from, from earnings. So um, we wanted to do that, but we wanted to, to have very, very low risk. Okay, so to do this, the first thing that came to mind, okay, let's see if we can set this up as a put ratio spread and see how low we can get our risk. So, you know, when we go through an earnings trade, there are a couple of things that we want to look at. We want to look, what is the expected move? So that's the, what is the market telling you that the expected move would be for NVIDIA into expiration? So we're looking at this into the, the uh, expiration. So it was the 10th was when the release was. The next day it was expiration. So this was a one-day trade. Now the expected move on this was for about a, I think it was about a 7% or 8% move. So all we did was set this thing up for a 4% move. It was actually less than a 4%. All we needed to do was have this go to $70, and we can make a really nice return on very little risk. So we set it up based on that. We wanted very low risk in case we were wrong, and then we had a potential to make $70 on a little risk, and the risk was 30 bucks, as you'll see. So this thing just blew to the upside, so you know, we kept the full 70 but let me show you the risk. And to me, it all comes down to risk, and then I assess whether I, I want to do the setup or not. So again, this was structured with puts to make it an upside move, put on the 10th, and the next day it blew to the upside after those release. So it was received $70 credit. You can see down here, $70 credit received. It was a 71, 70 put debit spread, then a 70, 69 bull put ratio, 2 to 1. Now, the max loss, it was a dollar wide spread, 71, 70, minus your credit received, received $70 credit, okay, so your max loss is the difference of 30. So, worst case scenario, if everything blew up in our face and it went the other way, we'd lose $30. But if it went straight up, which it actually did, we make 70. If it was to pin right at 70 the next day, the theoretical profit would have been 170. So that would be a over five hundred percent return, but uh, you know it blew straight to the upside. So we kept the full credit of seventy, and that was a two hundred thirty percent return in one day. So it's a strategy that, in my opinion, is really a must to add to your toolbox. You know, to really get you some consistent lower risk type trade straight ups, uh, setups, and it's it's what I call that low stress strategy. So here it was seventy bucks credit. And you know five contracts over three three hundred dollars by doing that, and again you have that two profit point theta decay, which is what you're taking advantage of. Very low capital at risk, so a lot of different ways that you can structure the trade if you understand, you know the the mechanics of it. So let's take a review of what you know was covered here today. So first off, we looked at you know what I think is one of the most lucrative high reward low risk option strategies. You know for any kind of market condition. Uh, the most important option factor, we covered that, and that's time, how to use that and measure it using theta to check that time decay. And then looking at you know, option pricing to see how that works in order to see what components affect that price. So how option pricing works and using it to your advantage by understanding the components that go into it. And then from that, selecting the right butterfly strategy from the very different ones that are offered for whatever market condition you're trading in. And then we went through some trades and, and, and hedging type of uh, scenarios there so you can kind of see actually how they do how they do work. So if you'd like to learn more um, you know, about this amazing strategy, let me show you what I've got for everybody here today. And I think it's a great package. You know, it's kind of the holiday package, I guess we could say. And it's my option uh, butterfly trading course. This is an on-demand course. I did this about three months ago. And it's a four-hour course, and it's 100% just on the option butterfly. So we go through in this course every strategy that I showed you here today that I outlined, you know, the, the balanced butterfly, the, the broken wing butterfly, the iron butterfly, the hedging of the butterfly. 
So, you know, it's a very comprehensive, detailed course, which I couldn't cover everything today in the hour. So this is for a four-hour plus course, plus you get the training manual of the course. My courses are very detailed, and then this is broken down in 30-minute modules, uh, and you get the PowerPoint, plus I've got four other bonuses that I'm going to give everybody here today that signs up. So uh, it's $97. The value of all this is $588. Now, here's a, actually, here's a uh, really nice endorsement that I got this week, uh, just two days ago. I think this came in on Tuesday. I got this out of the blue. And I was very, very, uh, I was like, wow, that was nice. You know, it says, Larry, just wanted to say again, what a terrific job you're doing on the option and tool teaching sessions. Uh, you have provided us with just an amazing amount of extremely valuable information and tools. And your ability to teach what you have so cleverly created is simply amazing. You show so much patience and seem to know exactly where we students would have the most difficulty and you hit on exactly those points with extra effort so very well. You're just a ter terrific professor. I like, I like that. It was kind of funny. Professor in the truest sense of the word. So I know uh, I speak for the masses when I say thank you very much for caring about us as students, providing us great tools and guidance, and for doing such an absolutely terrific job in all that you do. All the best. Uh, H. Randolph, Ph.D. This guy's like a physics guy. So I was like, holy cow, you know, here's a professor you know, complimenting me and calling me professor. So I was, I was very humbled by that. That was made me feel actually really good. But that's the kind of stuff I try to bring to all my members and people that take the course. And this was one, of, one really great course. So it's the Amazing Butterfly course. It's going to be $97 for everybody here today. Four-hour plus course on demand. So it's yours for as long as you want it. Now, if you decide not to buy today, you can go to my website, powercycletrading.com. And you can put that in and buy the course, and it's $197. Uh, so here's the link to it, if I can find this thing. Oh, whoops, gosh. Um, let me give you that link. Hold on one second. Um, oh, here it is. I've got a kind of different setup here I'm using today because I'm, I'm actually at my mom's house. So use that link there, powercycletrading.com forward slash P-I-C-K. And the other bonuses that you'll get, uh, we're going to do also a live follow-up Q&A will be part of this package. So we'll do that probably about two weeks. Give yourself time to go through the course. And then you'll get my bonus two, my complete option strategy manifesto. So this is a 15 option diagram of my, some of my favorite option trades. So it gives you a diagram of the trade explanation. So you can print it out, put it on your desk. And then also I'm going to give you my Greek power tool guide. So this is a, a desk you can print out, put on your desk um, of all the, the Greeks. So you, you know, if you're not sure of, okay, what is that gamma? What is delta, theta? So you can put this on your desk. So it's a little printout, which is really nice. And then for anybody that's never been a member of my trading, Power Cycle Trading Club, I'm going to give you one free month membership to that. We've got a lot of great stuff there, which I'll show you in just a second. So really great course package, but the best part is just the butterfly course, $97, on-demand, 30-minute modules, 213-page trading manual, zero risk. If you're not happy, send us email. We'll refund your $97. Now, here's what's in the course. And this course, again, is, is totally 100% on the butterfly. So it's the core basics that, you know, a lot of traders just don't understand the beauty of the butterfly. So the core basics that most traders miss out on uh, about the butterfly, which Greeks are vital in how they're used for the butterfly. Now here's the big part of it too, is how, when, and why to use the long call or put butterfly, the broken wing butterfly or skip strike, ratio butterfly, which is my favorite, directional butterfly, Iron Butterfly, Vacation Butterfly, and then what are the optimal times to put these trades on for the different strategies? When do you actually use these trades? What are the time frames? You know, do you put it on like you saw an example one day, two days, three days, four days? The different scenarios there for the different time frames. How to structure these setups where you're getting a 10 to 1 risk, you know, profit to, to loss on your risk ratio or higher, and sometimes as little as $10 or actually less than that. So uh, a lot of it uh, is keyed on that part of it. Now, 
how to profit from option volatility collapse and that theta decay. So you saw it in the option pricing components. So a big part of the course is for you to understand how these components work to your favor when you're doing the butterfly. And a big part of this too is if you're not, you know, playing the expiration game, here's a great, the beauty of the butterfly too, is to use it for expiration trades. So we call this option pinning. Uh, what is it and how to trade it using the butterfly? And then how to target that optimum expiration strike price, the pinning strike, and profit from it using the butterfly. Then a big part too is price target analysis. So how I go through the course, how to set up your targets using Fibonacci, the expected move of the option, and then selecting the right option strategy, butterfly strategy for that trade. A step-by-step -step checklist for the butterfly, when to put it on, take it off, execution management. Now, if nothing else, a big part of this course, if you're not hedging your positions or understanding how to hedge a core position, a big chunk of this course is how to use the butterfly spread to hedge your vertical spreads, either a debit spread or a credit spread. So if you don't take the course for anything else but this, this is worth 97, you know, 10 times over if you can just understand how to start hedging your core positions and then how also to use that butterfly hedge on your core positions. So it's a great course, a lot of great information in there, and it's a step-by-step -step detailed course with lots of trade examples uh, on how to use the butterfly spread. So you're going to get the on-demand butterfly course. It's called what I call my step-by-step -step blueprint on the strategy, four-hour and recorded modules of 30 minutes, 213-page training manual, the very detailed course, and then live follow-up Q&A we'll do, and probably we'll do that in about two weeks. The manifesto, so this is a diagram of all, some of my favorite strategies. It gives you the diagram, the risk profile, explains what they are, covered calls, ratios, spreads, etc. And then my handout, my Greek power tool guide so you can put on your desk to know what that Vega, what is Vega, what is Delta, Theta, Gamma. Um, and then if you've never been a member to my trading club, here's the link again for you. Uh, you're going to get one free month to that, to my trading club. It's 97 after that if you decide to stay on. And the link here today, again, is powercycletrading.com forward slash P-I-C-K. Um, in the tr virtual trading room, we've got a virtual trading room open every day. It opens up at, I come into the room about 9.20 a.m. Eastern, and I'm in there the first hour, hour and a half, and we go through futures. We do a lot of different day trades using futures, gold, uh, NASDAQ, crude, whatever's you know, moving based on our indicators and then I come back in for the last hour, do a daily market video update every day, showing you what the market's doing, what trades we're looking at, nightly video, that's the nightly video, do a lot of seasonality type trade setups, we do a live Q&A every week, hour, hour and a half, got some great trading educational stuff in the members area, and for every month you're, you're a paying member, you get a $20 credit, so discounts on all my trading indicators and courses as, as well, so a lot of great stuff there. Again, you know, 97 bucks, zero risk. You know, if you're not happy, send us an email, and we'll send every $97 back to you. So it's a win-win for you if you're kind of curious or interested in this type of trading, which hopefully you are. It's a way for you to, to get into it. And, and from the course, you'll learn a lot more about the options in general, how to use that expected move of the option and price targeting and stuff like that, even if you're you know, not interested in the butterfly. So uh, hopefully it's something that everybody here is going to want and I uh, hope, hope to see you uh, at the course and in my trading room and on future events. So I just want to say, again, thank you very much for having me here today, uh, Hubert and Jeanette and Trade Thirsty. And uh, if I have time for any questions and can see the questions, I'd be happy to answer the questions. Uh, let's see here. Where am I? Like I said, I've got a different uh, setup here today, but here I can see the questions now. Okay. Tell you what, Barry, um, I'll, if you want, I'll ask them for you so you don't have to. Oh, okay. Is there anything specific? The, yeah, thank you. Why don't you just minimize that and okay, okay, hang on a second. That'll help us with the recording. Yeah. Because yeah. we, we started a couple minutes late, so we'll go ahead and take a couple for you. Hang on. Let me look. All right. Um, all right. Here's a question. Um, we, we, are wondering, we are wondering when you have to short puts and the stock goes down, how does that work? Yeah, okay, so when you're... Well, the put ratio butterfly. Yeah, so the thing is, okay, so when you're trading options, right, so 
if you want to go a position to the upside, what do you do? You can buy calls or you can sell puts, right? So that's an upside directional trade using options. Now, if you are directionally setting up your trade for an upside move by being short puts, if the market goes down, that's going to go against you, right? Now, the beauty of the butterfly, these setups, is that when you go into the trade, like I showed you, you know exactly what your risk is. So you can play it a couple of different ways. Uh, you can trade it to use that capital that you have at risk as your stop. So let's say you had, you put on a, a spread and you had um, at risk $71, you know, based on what you were seeing, like that one example. Well, that would be your loss, 71. You could use it that way, or you can stop out of the trade before. What I usually do a lot of times is I use what I call, in some situations, a 50% rule. So let's say you had on a, a spread and, and you had $71 at risk. So let's say it goes against you 50 bucks or something, 50%, and it got down to $30. Then I might make a decision to stop it out. But you might just say, okay, I'll just go ahead and, you know, whatever my capital at risk is, I'll use that as a stop. So with these types of str uh, strategies or spreads, you can set it up for very low capital at risk. So you can see that one trade uh, we showed you had a risk of $30. So that would be your, your risk. And if it goes down, you lose $30. Uh, and if you go up, you know what you make. But the, the key is to know what your risk is and are you happy with that risk. But to answer the question, if you're short puts, that's for an upward bias move. And if the market goes down, that goes against your position. So hopefully that answers that question. Okay. Um, a lot of people are saying that the link that I'm posting is not clickable, but they should be able to copy paste it. Um, uh, it's powercycletrading.com forward slash PICK. And yeah, let me try again and see if this yeah. works. Um, but if you can see this, I don't know if you can see this. Put that in. Change your browser, powercycletrading.com forward slash P-I-C-K, all small cap, click. Okay, excellent. All right, Dean is saying it worked. Yeah, it, a lot of times it, don't use Internet Explorer. God, it's just, I don't know, it always seems to be Internet Explorer. So uh, yeah. you, use that, and that should pull it up okay. Yeah, so the, link, the link is working fine. If you type it out yourself or you copy-paste, the link is working fine. You cannot click on it inside the PowerPoint. And if you can't click on it inside the answer box that we're posting, you should be able to simply type it out yourself. Um, Larry, do you have to be in front of a computer to do the, the butterfly trade, or can you do it from a cell phone? Yeah, you could probably set it up on a mobile. I'm not. Um, they have all these different mobile apps, so I'm, I'm sure just check with your whatever broker you're using. And you can because, I mean, these are structures that you can set up as, as one spread. You don't, you don't have to do the legs. You set it up as one trade spread. Okay, so you, you put it into your order bar, however you're going to do the order, you, you would set it up as this ratio butterfly. So it'll be set up for you, and it'll say, okay, here's the, the bid ask on it. It'll be, you know, you're going to get a 30 credit or 35 credit, and then you just, you know, hit the bid or the ask. Okay, all right. Um, um, Larry, I'm on a Schwab platform. Can this order be placed on Schwab? Do you know, and if so, how much? Yeah. Oh, Schwab, yeah. You can use Schwab, sure. Just they should have the ratio butterfly. I don't, you know, I, we actually I have a Schwab account, but I don't really do these spreads on Schwab. We use TradeStation, Thinkorswim, uh, something like that. But uh, Swab, you should be able to. If you're if you can on Swab, then you probably need to get another broker because these are not, you know, these are, are fairly should be fairly common for any decent broker. And Swab is one of the best ones out there, so they should have it. Okay, are all of these trades typically short term? Yeah, I like to have them short term because I want to take advantage of that that theta decay and that that uh, volatility collapse. So you can see from that two profit points. That one Nvidia trade, where you know, like on the day after the trade was put on, it like had a forty-four dollar return, but then the waiting one more day till expiration, it had a hundred nineteen. So the, it it takes advantage of that theta decay, and that really accelerates as you get close to expiration. So I typically like to do these like maybe we well, can do one day, or you can do it seven or eight days out, something like that, or fourteen. So I like to do them short duration to take advantage of that accelerated. Theta decay and also that volatility decay or collapse. 
Okay. All right, Larry. Why don't you um, just one real, real quick, one more time, go over your offer, and then we'll um, we'll yeah. go ahead and hand the mic over to our next well, speaker. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So basically, everything you're going to get here is the four plus hour on demand course and broken down thirty minute modules. We're going to do a live follow up Q and A. This will also be recorded, and if you can't make the uh, actual Q and A, you can send in your questions ahead of time, and I'll answer those the first part of it, and that's recorded. You get my manifesto guide, so it's 15 option strategies. You can print it out on your desk. The Greek power tool guide, print it out, put it on your desk. Uh, one month trial membership, if you've never been a member to our trading club, you get that and a lot of great stuff there. We have virtual trading room, nightly video updates, do a lot of seasonality type, type trading setups, which are really interesting. And then um, you, you get all this, 97 plus money back guarantee. So just put in in your, your browser, just put in, type in powercycletrading.com forward slash P-I-C-K, and uh, that will give you uh, the link, uh, and that should go through, and then just click on it. You'll, you'll see the order bar, order bar. Now, you're just going to see the $97, but everybody that I see signs up here today, you'll get all these bonuses. When you look at the order form, all you're going to see is that you're going to get the butterfly course, but everybody that orders here today, you'll get all these bonuses as well. So we'll be able to track it, so don't worry about it. And if you have any questions at all, you can contact us using support at powercycletrading.com. Support okay. at powercycletrading.com. One more, Larry. If you, you, could butterfly strategies apply to options on futures contracts, like for example crude? Yes, yes, yes you can do. Yeah, the first time I really um, saw a massive butterfly trade. We did like 20,000 contracts uh, on a crude over-the-counter uh, butterfly for a large hedge fund. So yes, you can do them on, on uh, crude or any kind of you know, option futures. Okay, all right, excellent. So Larry Gaines, his offer is powercycletrading.com slash pick. For those of you who, uh, a couple people messaged saying they'd like to talk to Larry, you can send him an email at support at powercycletrading.com and give him uh, your question and he'll either respond by email or he'll call you back. If you give him his, your phone number and the times that you'd like to talk, uh, you're welcome, Wendy. You're welcome, Kurt. You're welcome, Steve. You're welcome, Dean, John Birch. All you people who are here today, thank you for coming. Larry, I'm going to go ahead and take the mic from you if you'll give me a okay. second to reset. Thank you very much. Said, thank you and happy Thanksgiving. Tell Camilla happy said hello. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Okay, bye. All right, y'all, let me... Uh, let me do a little switcheroo here. One more time, powercycletrading.com slash pick. Y'all, thank Larry for joining us today, taking time out of his four-day weekend.